Hello everyone, my name is Quad and this is a very long video that will show you how to get all the companions you can get in Warframe. I will also show you what their unique mods are that make the companions truly shine sometimes. There is a huge amount of companions you can get for yourself and some are better than others, obviously. There are Sentinels, Moas, Hounds, Kubros, Kavaths, Predacites, Wolpophilus and more may also come in the future. Videos like these take me a very long time to make, so a like would be appreciated to help me in the YouTube algorithm. But yeah, let's now go over all the companions, starting with Kubros. If you do not know, Kubros are the closest we have to dogs in Warframe. They can accompany you on missions and give you various boosts. The boosts depend on the breed you get, and there is 5 in total, all of which we will cover later. But first, let's go over how to get one. You will first be able to get a Kubro after you complete the Howl of the Kubro quest. During the quest, you will get most of the things you need to hatch a Kubro. You will get the incubator segment, you will get a Kubro egg, which you can get multiple of by destroying feral Kubro dens on Earth tile sets, and for the end, you will also need an incubator power core, which is extremely expensive for the lower ranking players, so I recommend you play with different variations of Kubro later in the game when you have enough credits to spare. The breeds of Kubro differ in amount of health, armor, shields, damage and damage types they deal. But these attributes in reality don't really matter that much. What does matter is the mods each breed comes with. Each breed gets two mods right away after you hatch it, but we must first see how to hatch a Kubro. Getting yourself a Kubro companion is pretty easy, but you need our incubator power core and a Kubro egg. The first time you get a Kubro, you will have to choose the random incubation, which will randomly hatch one of the five breeds of Kubro. If you have an imprint of any Kubro, you can get it on right here, so you get a 50% higher chance to get the Kubro that imprint variety is for. For example, here I have a Chessa Kubro imprint, so I will have about 50% chance to get a Chessa Kubro and about 50% chance to get one of the other breeds. You may also add two imprints for the Kubro of the same type, which will give you a 100% chance to get the desired type. For this time, I will choose the random incubation. The incubation process will take 48 hours, 24 hours if you have the Nutrio segment in your orbiter. When the incubation is complete, you will get a Kubro, which you can name and then watch just roam around the orbiter. He is small and he is a good boy, so you can look at him for a bit. If you want to use him in combat though, you need to mature him first, for which you need to go back to the incubator and select the mature option. And boom, you have a mature Kubro. As I said, there is 5 types of Kubro, which we'll cover right now. We will look at the mod dispositions, there is also the stats on the left, so you can look at that, I won't mention them. But we will cover the 2 mods every Kubro comes from. So let's start with the Huras Kubro. Huras Kubro comes with the following mod disposition and 2 mods. The first mod he comes with is Hunt, which will allow your Kubro to use an ability that will knock down every single enemy in his path. The enemy will ragdoll away and sustain a very small amount of damage, so yeah, it is not the best, but quite good for crowd control in the lower levels. The second mod you get with the Hura Kubro is Stock, which will cloak the Kubro and you when you get 24 meters away from an enemy. This mod is great to use with melee weapons, so you can stack stealth affinity multiplier and get lots more affinity with melee weapons. The second Kubro breed we will take a look at is the Raxa Kubro breed, which comes with the following mod disposition. The first mod the Raxa Kubro breed comes with is Howl, which is perfect for crowd control. With this mod your Kubro gains the ability to Howl, which will make 15 enemies that are up to 24 meters away from him run away. The fear effect lasts for 16 seconds, so it is great for crowd control. I recommend you do not use this mod in defense missions because you need to kill enemies as fast as possible and you don't want them to run away. The second mod Raxabreed comes with is Protect, which will replenish 300 shields on your Warframe. The ability can be recast every 5 seconds since there is a short cooldown. 
This mod is great for survivability of lower level players because you get a lot of shields and survivals, excavations, defenses, so you will survive a lot longer. Sahasa Kubro is the third breed of Kubro we can get and it is extremely good because of the mods it comes with. This is the following mod disposition, but let's look at the mods. The first mod is Dig, which will allow your Kubro to dig for resources every 15 seconds. You will always get two items and also have a chance to get the third item, since the dig chance is 270%. The items you can get range from mods usually found in the void, ammo, energy, and even resources that are common or rare. It is great to use since Sehasa Kubro can dig everywhere, even in Grenier Galleons. Yeah, Warframe does not make sense, or these dogs can chew through everything. The second mod you get with the Sahasa Kubro is called Ferocity, which will allow your Kubro to do a finisher attack on the enemy with 120% increased damage. It is quite good, but it does make your Kubro susceptible to damage while he does the finisher attack since he is in the same place for multiple seconds. Just keep that in mind, if your Kubro is getting downed all the time, it's probably because of this mod. The fourth breed on the Kubro list is the Sunika Kubro, which has the following mod disposition. The first mod you get with him is called Savagery, which will make your Kubro do a finisher attack that will do 120% more damage to the enemy than the normal attack. This mod is exactly the same as the Ferocity mod for the Sahasa Kubro, but yeah, you need to watch out because it is usually because of this mod that the Kubro gets downed. He's immobile, he will take a lot of damage this way. The second mod you get with the Sunika Kubro is made for capture missions. The mod is called Unleashed. What this mod allows your Kubro to do is hold the most important enemy, like the capture target in capture missions, for a couple of seconds. The range of the ability is 60 meters, so he will run towards the target and hold it for you. After your Kubro releases his prey, he will need 10 seconds until he can bite and hold your enemy again. It is quite a good ability in higher level missions, when it is harder to catch the targets, but again, he will be immobile, so a lot of damage is going to come his way. The last Kubro we will take a look at today is called the Chessa Kubro, and he comes with the following mod disposition. The first mod we get with the Chessa Kubro is called Neutralize, which will allow your Kubro to disarm an enemy in a 20 meter radius. The ability has a 15 second cooldown, which is a massive downside, but it is still great and gets the job done. The enemies that lose their weapons will be following you around and will not get their weapons back, so they will be forced to melee you. It is fun to see them <laughs> like, run around, it is so funny. The second mod Chessa Kubro comes with is called Retrieve, which will allow your Kubro to give you additional loot from the corpses of your enemies every 10 seconds. The ability has a 30 meter radius and is super good. This ability does not work with Necros, for example, but does work with other loot frames such as Ivara, Korra and Atlas with their augments. This ability even works on Tusk Thumpers, so it is amazing. Altogether, there is three breeds of Kavat, Smita, Adarza and Vaska. Getting the first two varieties, the Smita and Adarza, is quite easy, but Vaska, quite hard. We will cover how to get every single one of the Kavat breeds in a few minutes, but let's first get over everything we need to make us a space kitty. There is quite a couple of things you need. The first thing is the Kavat Incubator Upgrade Segment. You can get the blueprint of it in your dojo, or you can get it by killing the Hieka Masters, the weird Grandma Grenier with bald cats. The drop chances are not that high and you will need a bunch of alloy plates to craft the segment, therefore I suggest you do endless missions such as survivals and try getting everything at once. So killing Grenier and farming alloy plates. You can easily do that on missions around Saturn and on Sedna. Besides the Kavat Incubator Core, you will also need Kavat Genetic Codes. The only way to get these is by scanning the Feral Kavats roaming about the Orokin Ruins of Deimos. I have made an in-depth video about Kavat Genetic Code farming already, so be sure to watch it if you need any. But let's continue for now. When you have both the things we listed, so the Kavat Incubator Core and enough genetic codes, 
you can finally get to your incubator and try to make your first Kavat. Go to the incubator and select the Kavat breeding on top. You will need 10 Kavat genetic codes and 1 incubator power core. If you have everything, you can then begin the incubation process. The first time you come around to making a Kavat, you will need to select the random incubation option since you need an animal to get the imprints. By choosing the random incubation, you will have a 50-50 chance to get either the Adarza Kavat or the Smita Kavat. If you somehow do have the imprints, you can use them here for a higher chance of a specific Kavat variety. For example, let's say you want to get a Smita Kavat. If you wouldn't add any imprints to the process, you would have a 50-50 chance to get the Smita Kavat or the Adarza Kavat, but if you add two imprints of Smita Kavat, for example, you will have a 100% chance to get the Smita Kavat. You can get the blueprints for the genetic code template, which is used to make the imprints on the market, and it is really not that expensive. For this time, I will choose a random incubation. You will have to wait for 48 hours to get your first Kavat up and running, 24 hours if you have the Nutrio incubator upgrade segment, but this segment is not required at all. When the incubation is done, you have a beautiful small cat. You can now name your Kavat as you wish and keep him as a pet that will follow you around in the orbiter. If you want him to accompany you on your missions on the other hand, you can mature him and have a great companion. As I said, you can get the Adarza or the Smita Kavat this way, which we will quickly look at right now. The only difference between the two varieties is the amount of health, the amount of shields and the mods you can put on them. Other than that, there is nothing else. Smita Kavat comes with this mod disposition and with two mods. The first one is Mischief, which will make your Kavat invisible for 9 seconds every 7 seconds. When he gets invisible, he will summon a decoy which will attract fire from your Kavat and from you, so it is a very good kitty. The decoy will get destroyed quite soon, so it is not the best, but it may save you from very bad situations sometimes. It is quite a nice mod to have. The second mod that is Smita Kavat specific is Charm, which is absolutely the best mod ever. This mod will allow your Kavat to bless you in quotation marks. The Blessing has a 28% chance to activate every 27 seconds. The Blessings come in the form of Instant Reload, 90 second double resource and affinity boost, small energy refill, 100% crit chance increase and more. It is just amazing. I always rock with my Smita Kavat in this mod on, it is so freaking good. The Adarza Kavat comes with the following mod dispositions and the following mods. Reflect, which makes your Kavat have a 40% chance to deflect any damage received. The damage dealt back is amplified by 60% and reflected to the attacker. The second mod is Cat's Eye, which can be the most broken mod ever if you use it in some crit builds. It increases the critical chance of everyone that is 25 meters away from it every 20 seconds. The effect lasts for 10 seconds, so there is a 10 second grace period, let's say. It is awesome to use. Really freaking fun and powerful. But yeah, that is it about these two Kavat breeds, now let's go over the Vaska Kavat. The Vaska Kavats are a little bit more grindy to get than the other two feline counterparts. To get a Vaska Kavat, you will first need two Vaska Kavat imprints, which you can get the easy way by trading with your friends, or you can get them the hard way. For the hard way, you will first need a Kavat of any kind. You will need to get it to the Plains of Eidolon at night and search for the Vaska Kavats there. Your Kavat and the Vald Kavat need to get into a fight and need to fight until your Kavat starts glowing red. This means your Kavat is infected with the Vaska virus, which in reality does not do anything, but it is what we need to get the Vaska Kavat you want. To get the Vaska Kavat, you will need two Vaska Kavat imprints. To get them, you need to bring your Vaska virus infected Kavat back to your orbiter. Go to the incubator and choose the genetic tools option at the top. This will allow you to make the imprints. I suggest making one and then going back to the planes to get reinfected, since making the imprint will remove the Vaska Kavat infraction from your Kavat. Once you have two imprints, you then need to go under the Kavat incubation segment once again, begin incubation and add the two Vaska Kavat imprints you have. This will give you a 100% chance to get the Vaska Kavat. The process is a bit too much if you ask me, but it is quite fun to experiment with this. 
Maybe not the first time you're making a Vaska Kavad, but maybe the second time. The Vaska Kavads start with the following mod disposition and these two mods. Transfusion, which is basically an infinite revival mod, which will sacrifice 20% of the Kavads health for your revival. I see this mod as completely useless since Giga Chads and Giga Chadets like you never die. Is Giga Chadets even a word? But yeah, let's go to the other mod, which is called Draining Bite, which will enable a special attack your Kavat can do that will deal 400 damage and regen 10% of his health. It is quite nice, but it can easily be switched out with some other health regening mod, if you ask me. Yeah, this is basically a vampire cat. We have gone over all the Kavat Breeze, but let me tell you about my Kavat. I usually rock around with my Smita Kavat called Natsu. Natsu is my cat and I am going to feature him in this video since he's a very good boy. Just look at him. He is so cute. This is the build I have on him. It is a 7 Forma build which is quite expensive but quite good as well. I can easily take him on a Steel Path mission and he is absolutely fine. That is the Smita Kavat I have and the Quad Kavat I have right here. He skidded out with um, some cloth armor and he comes with a rechargeable feature which means he will only be active a couple hours a day and the other hours are just no go. He cannot do anything so he can recharge his batteries. The mods I have equipped on him are the get away from me stare which repels enemies and allies away from him otherwise he will do massive damage which may apply a bleeding effect and the other mod he comes with is called the soul stare which makes him immobile but he does a massive amount of emotional damage but yeah that is it um yeah he's he's a good boy getting this companion is extremely easy and you can probably do it right away if you haven't got one yet. It is called the Helminth Charger. To get a Helminth Charger you need an incubator which you will unlock with the Howl of the Kubro quest. Besides that you also need three more things, a Kubro Egg, an Incubator Power Core and the Pink Cyst. You can find the Pink Cyst on the neck of every single Warframe you own if you have not removed it yet. When you open the incubator, you will see the option Drain Cyst on the bottom. If you do that, you will have a 100% chance to get a Helminth Charger. The hatching process will take 48 hours, 24 hours if you have the Nutrio segment installed. When everything is done, your Helminth Charger will come out and you will see his beauty. He does actually look pretty nice if you ask me. A bit infested, but okay. You can name him and take him out on your missions as you wish. He mainly does slash and toxin damage, which is great to use against the corpus, but you may also add some cold damage if you have it, so it can deal viral damage, great against the grenier paired up with the slash damage. Your Helminth will come with the following mod disposition and the following two mods. The first mod is called Probosis, which will allow your Helminth to pull an enemy with a very long tentacle. He will do some damage, but the main point of this ability is to immobilize a target. It is quite nice to use it as crowd control during the earlier levels of Warframe, but it does make your Helminth mobile, so it will be susceptible to larger amounts of damage while he uses the ability. The second mod he comes with is called Trample, which will allow your Helminth Charger to rush the enemies in front of him and knock them down. All around a great mod to have on your Helminth, especially if you love to control the movements of your enemies. Those are the two mods he already comes with, but there is also four more mods which will greatly improve your Helminth Charger. The mods are all part of the Strain Helminth set and we will cover them all. You can get them from the Directors which you can kill during the second tier Profit Taker bounty. The bounty that is also great for farming toroids. You can also get the mods as the rewards of the actual bounty, but hoping for that is a very bad idea. Let's look at the main effect we are looking for from all the mods. Any mod out of this 4 will allow the Helminth to grow cysts, from which you will spawn maggots. The number of cysts depends on the number of mods from the strain set you use on your whole build. If you have only one mod from the strain set on your build, your Helminth Charger will spawn 2 cysts every 25 seconds and the maggots will spawn after 6 seconds. If you however have all 4 mods equipped on your build, the Helminth will spawn 
8 cysts over 24 seconds, from which maggots will spawn every 25 seconds. So it is better to get as many strain mods as you can. The maggots are fun to look at and are great for crowd control, since they will immobilize every enemy they land on for a couple of seconds. But yeah, the maggots are only the collective effect of these mods, so let's look at their separate effects as well. Strain Eruption is a mod you can put on your helmet charger that will make the maggots deal damage in amount of 4% of the enemy's health, once they jump on the enemy and explode. So yeah, it is great to use the maggots on enemies that have a lot of health. The damage will be corrosive, so their effect will also reduce the amount of armor the enemy has, which means this mod is built for use against the infested and the grenier heavies. This mod is fun all around, it is fun to look at. I just love to use it in lower level missions so I can look at the maggots. I, I don't know, it is just funny to me. These maggots are not the only ones that do this damage, however. This mod also applies to the maggots spawned by Nidus's fourth ability called Ravenous and the maggots spawned by Pathocyst melee weapon. Yeah, you can be extremely strong with this. The next mod on the list is Strain Fever that can be put on your helmet charger. What this mod does is pretty straightforward, it will increase the damage your helmet charger deals by 30% for each cyst it sprouts, so 240% damage increase at max. It is just great if you ask me. The next mod on the list is Strain Consume. It is a mod you can put on your Warframe and what it does is great if you lack health. The maggots that are up to 5 meters away will be consumed by you and will regen your health, 4% of your max health per maggot, which is great. If you do not miss at least 4% of your max health, the maggots will not be consumed, which is a good safety feature if I may add. The last mod from the Strain set, Strain Infection, can be put on your melee weapon. What this mod does is quite great for critical damage based weapons, since it will increase your critical damage by 20% per cyst your helmet charger sprouts. So 160% increased critical damage if you have all the mods equipped. I love using this mod, it is freaking good on critical damage based weapons. Altogether there is 15 sentinels currently in the game. This includes the ones that are of different variety as well, like Helios and Helios Prime, for example. The main difference between the two varieties is 1. The looks, 2. The weapons, and 3. Just some stats, but yeah, nothing special really. The main thing you have to know about the Sentinels is that they are your companions which you can equip with mods, so they can aid you on your missions. Each Sentinel will also get a weapon with it that will allow it to shoot, and yes, we will also cover the weapons, which I want to say right now, do not really matter most of the time. You have to know that Sentinels are primarily used for the special mods that come with them or you can get for them, but yeah. With that out of the way, let's go. Taxon is the first sentinel we can get, the two mods he comes with are called Retarget, which will allow your sentinel to attack, and the second mod is called Molecular Conversion, which will occasionally give your Warframe 200 shields after your sentinel attacks an enemy. The weapon he comes with is called Artax, which is nice to use since it shoots a beam that will slow down enemies. You can mod it, of course, to deal any other status damage or status type, which is great if you want a sentinel that applies a bunch of status effects. Due to this sentinel being the literally first one you can get, it is quite bad later in the game, but it is great for any starting player. Shade is the second sentinel we can get, you can buy the blueprint for him on the market for 100,000 credits and you can craft him in your foundry. You can also get the Prisma version of him from Barokitir when he comes around, but the chance he brings it with him is quite low. It will cost you 300,000 credits and 500 ducats. The main difference between the two varieties is that the Prisma version has increased stats and far better weapon than the normal one. There are two mods Shade comes with, the first one is Ghost, which will give it an ability to cloak itself and your Warframe when you are at least 10 meters away from the enemy. It is great to use if you love to play stealthily. The second mod he comes with is called Revenge, which will make it hold off its attacks until you fire first, feeding into the whole stealth play. You may also get a mod called Ambush later in the game from Cephalon Samaris, which will increase your damage by 120% every time your cloak is broken for 3 seconds. 
it is a super good mod if you ask me. Each kind of shade comes with its own version of the burst rifle, prisma version with the prisma version for example, and yes, prisma version is far superior to the normal one. The burst rifle shoots at the enemies in, what a surprise, in bursts, which primarily deal puncture damage, so it weakens the enemies. It is not the best sentinel weapon you can get, but it is pretty freaking close. Death Cube is the third companion on the list. There are two varieties, the normal version, which you can get on the market, and the prime version, which you need to get through cracking relics. The Death Cube comes with one mod, it is called Vaporize, and it will allow your Death Cube to deal 600 damage to an enemy every once in a while. You may also get another Death Cube exclusive mod from Cephalon Samaris called Energy Generator, which will generate an energy orb each time your Death Cube assists you with 10 kills. Quite nice if you ask me, especially with energy hungry Warframes. A little tip though, you will need a good Sentinel weapon. When it comes to the weapons the Death Cubes come with, they are Death Machine Rifle and creatively named Death Machine Rifle Prime with the Prime version being obviously superior. The Death Machine Rifle needs some time to wind up to its max fire rate, but it can then deal a massive amount of damage in a form of slash damage, which is insanely good. The next on the list is Virm, which has two varieties, the Normal and the Prime, with Prime obviously being far superior. It comes with the Crowd Dispersion mod, which will knock down the enemies that are relatively close to you, great to use against melee enemies, since yeah, they will just not be able to touch you. You can also later get the Negate mod from Cephalon Semaris, which will give your Virm the ability to remove one status effect from your Warframe every 5 seconds. This is great if you want to defend yourself from bleeding and being on fire. It is a good mod to have. When it comes down to weapons, there are two varieties, the normal one and the prime one. Normal ones are far worse than the prime, but even the prime ones are terrible in my opinion with the Virm. It is an automatic rifle which will just shoot at the enemies with not so great accuracy if you move. Primarily it does puncture damage and it focuses on critical chance, so you know what to mod for. The next sentinel on the list is Carrier, which was for a long time one of my favorite sentinels. You can get the normal version of it on the market for 100,000 credits, or you can get the prime version if you love cracking some relics open. Carrier comes with the ammo case mod, which will allow it to convert ammo into the type you need on your weapon, which is extremely nice if you ask me. You may also get the looter mod from Savalon Samaris later in the game, which will allow your carrier to open loot crates up to 12 meters away every couple of seconds. It is a nice mod to have if you don't have any explosive weapons and just want to zoom through a mission. The sentinel gun he comes with is called Sweeper, which is a shotgun version of a sentinel gun. You can get the prime version of it as well, which is obviously far superior to the normal one, but yeah, it is freaking powerful, but only up close. I sadly do not have Carrier Prime because every time the event for some Prime Unvaulting or Prime Resurgence comes up, I cannot play the game and I don't get the freaking parts. So yeah, I hope you're lucky. The last Sentinel you can exclusively get on the market is called Diriga, which is focused on sniping. It comes with two mods, the first one is Arc Coil, which has 10% chance to electrocute the enemies that are close to you, good against melee enemies, and the second mod is called Electro Pulse, which will allow your sentinel to zap an enemy that is up to 15 meters away from you every 5 seconds. It will stun it and just keep stunning it until you eventually kill it. Let's call it the Bully Sentinel, because it, it is what it is, he does the bullying. Diriga comes with the Wulcock Sniper Rifle, which has a very slow fire rate, but it has amazing critical chance and status chance. It also primarily deals electricity damage, which is quite good for stunning enemies, so yeah, bully. The next sentinel can only be found in the biolab of your clan. Jin is unique companion because of the mods you can get for him, but let's first look at the mods he comes with. The first mod is Fatal Attraction, which will allow it to draw enemies close to you and after they get close enough, they will get an explosion in their face. It is great for crowd control. And the second mod is called Thumper, which will make your Jin shoot at the first enemy it sees that is up to 60 meters away. But yeah, that is nothing special. You may also get a special mod for the Jin, which will make it revive itself after 90 seconds of it being destroyed. 
it is an awesome mod to have if you are playing long missions against high level enemies and your companions die a lot. This is basically a sentinel version of a Volpaphyla. The weapon it comes with is called Stinger, which will primarily deal toxin damage, so it is great against corpus enemies, but other than that, it is quite mediocre. You may also want to know that if you are playing with a Gazal Machete and have the Fatal Attraction mod on your chin, the mod will have an additional effect, which will give your Gazal Machete some corrosive status effect damage, so yeah, it's still quite mediocre, but it is fun to use, not gonna lie. The next sentinel on the list is Helios, which is an extremely nice sentinel to have. It can be found in the Corpus Energy Lab in your clan, the normal version, but you may also get yourself the Prime version if you love cracking open relics. Helios comes with two mods, the first mod is Investigator, which will allow your Helios to scan moving targets like enemies and get them into your codex. It is a godsend if you want to get all the entries done, believe me. And the second mod your Helios comes with is called Targeting Receptor, which will allow it to shoot three glaive-like projectiles at your enemies, dealing massive amounts of damage. You may also get the Detect Vulnerability mod from Cephalon Samaris later in the game, which will make your Helios reveal your enemy's weak points, so you can kill them easier. It is a good mod to have if you want to get a lot of critical hits, but um, yeah, usually late game it just everything just dies in one hit, so yeah. The weapon your Helios comes with is called the Deconstructor. Obviously, there is a prime version of it as well, which is much, much, much better. This weapon will launch a burst of three shots. The first shot will deal impact damage, the second one puncture damage, and the third one slash damage. This is one of my favorite Sentinel weapons, even though it is far from the best since the projectiles travel quite slowly and commonly miss their targets. In reality, Sentinel weapons are just not good. The next Sentinel on the list is called Oxylus, which is built for open world exploration. You can get the blueprint for it at the business at rank 5 with the Solaris United for 20,000 Fortuna standing. So yeah, quite expensive. It comes with two mods, the first one is Scan Aquatic Life Forms, which will make all the fish in the water visible to you. Yeah, it is freaking amazing to have Oxylus as your companion so you don't waste Luminous Dye or other fishing related stuff. And also your nerves, yeah, you just can't see the fish in the water, no. And the second mod is called Scan Matter, which will make your Sentinel reveal all the loot containers in a 60 meter radius every 30 seconds for 8 seconds. This mod is great if you're looking for rare containers or secret rooms. You may also get the Oxylus exclusive mod called Botanist from Cephalon Samaris later in the game, which will allow your Oxylus to scan plants in your missions. I recommend getting this mod since you can feed the plants to your Hellman and you will pretty much get them for nothing but playing the game. I myself usually take it on capture void fissure missions on Earth because there is so many plans to be had and I really need to find that Threshcone Prime. The Oxylus Sentinel also comes with the Moltron Burst Rifle, which has a good critical chance and mainly does puncture damage, so it is good against armor, but yeah, it's quite mediocre. But enough with Oxylus, let's now go to the last Sentinel, Nautilus. You can farm up the Sentinel parts for Nautilus in Welljack missions, points of interest. I sincerely recommend you look at the wiki for all the places you can get the parts from, cause yeah, there is quite a grind to get everything. The two mods Nautilus comes with are Auto Omni and Cordon. Auto Omni will allow your Nautilus to repair something on your railjack every 20 seconds and Cordon will force enemies that are up to 30 meters away into clusters that you can dispatch a little bit more easily. Sometimes it is quite hard to see the effect because usually enemies are dead before they even enter the ship but believe me it, it works. The weapon Nautilus comes with is called Verglass, which primarily deals cold damage, great to use against shielded enemies and the infested. It is not the best, but it is great if you wish to have a high status chance weapon on your Sentinel. It is really good in that regard. We will first go over how to get the Wolfophilas, the Foxes of Warframe, and then we'll look at some other things you can get for them. If you want to tame a Wolpophila, you need three things. A weakened Wolpophila, a mutagen, and an antigen. 
we'll go over every single thing in a minute, but first we must see the three versions of Opophyla. There are three subspecies of Opophyla, which you can find in the Cambian Drift. The Sly Volpophyla, the Crescent Volpophyla and the Panzer Volpophyla, listed from the most common to the least common. As I said, you will need a weakened Volpophyla, so let's see how to get one. The Volpophylas roaming around the Cambian Drift will sometimes get into a fight with the infested, also roaming around the place. When the Volpophylas get down, they will be marked and you can pick them up. And that is as easy as it gets. If you're having problems and cannot get the weakened Bulbophyla subspecies you want, my suggestion is to use the conservation trick, with which you can find the scat on the ground, follow it to the main area, call the Bulbophyla and, at last, trank it and put it to sleep. Then you need to lure the infested to your area, which is not that hard, but remember, do not get far away, because the Bulbophyla can despawn. After that, let the infested attack the Bulbophyla, and that's it, easy peasy. Sly Volpophylas are easy to get without the pheromone synthesizers, the items that increase the chance of rarer animal types in conservation. Panzer and the Crescent types of Volpophylas do need the pheromone synthesizer, however. If you do use the pheromone synthesizer during Vome, you will find a Crescent Volpophyla, but if you use it during Fast, you will find a Panzer Volpophyla. Yeah, just don't forget to track the animal and let it get hit by the infested. It will glow a bit, so you know when to pick it up. When you have the weakened Bulbophyla variant you want, you need to bring it back to Sun at Necrolisk. Here you can get the two other ingredients. The first one is the Mutagen, which will make your Bulbophyla more resistant to specific status types, and the second one is the Antigen, which will give you one polarity slot depending on the antigen type. You can see all the costs and effects of these items on the screen. It really depends on which ones you choose, but the rule of thumb is, the more expensive something is, the better it is. You need to buy the blueprints for the two ingredients, then craft them and bring them back to the sun. When you're back there again, you need to choose the Wolpophila revification option and choose the ingredients of your Wolpophila revification process. The mutagen and the antigen change your Volpophyla's looks and stats, so be sure to look at the wiki if you can decide what to choose. When you're done though, press the equip button and build. Boom. You have a Volpophyla now, but this is not the final version of it. You first need to get it to level 30 and then bring it back to the sun. You'll be able to guild your Volpophyla there for 10 sun tokens and 5000 in Trati standing. This will increase its stats and will allow you to name it, plus some other things you couldn't do before. You will also get to take one more polarity for the mod slots, which is amazing. Okay, but let's go back to the beginning. As I said numerous times before, there are three kinds of Opophylas and we will cover all three of them. They all come with the Penjega mod polarity at the start and also one polarity slot you choose with the antigen. This is what happens before you guild the animal. After the gilding, you will get another polarity slot, which is amazing. But yeah, let's go over the two mods each Wolpophyla comes with now. Sly Wolpophyla comes with the following mods. Survival Instinct will make your Sly Wolpophyla cast an ability that will increase your evasion by 40 percentage points until your next attack. If you do not attack anything, the effect will last 8 seconds and will have a 5 second cooldown when it ends. So it can be recast again. If you don't know what evasion is, it is basically a reduction of enemy accuracy, so enemies will be less inclined to hit you. This mod is quite good to have on your Volpophyla while playing Wisp, for example. The second mod your Sly Volpophyla comes with is called Sly Devolution, which will make your Volpophyla pretty much immortal in the long run. When your Sly Volpophyla dies, it will start floating around your head as a sentinel for 30 seconds. After that, it will be revived again automatically. While the Volpophyla is in the sentinel or larva form, which is the correct term, it will also increase your evasion by 20% for 8 seconds each time you kill an enemy. It is a very good mod to have since you don't have to worry about reviving your companion. The second Volpophyla we have is the Crescent Volpophyla, which comes with the two following mods. Crescent Charge is the first mod that comes with the Crescent Volpophyla. It makes it do an attack that will charge the enemy within 10 meters and deal a small amount of damage to them. The enemy's hit will be lifted for 4 seconds, even though the mod description says 8 seconds, it is 
is not correct. Besides that, the lift in enemies also take 100% more damage, which is obviously a huge boost as well. So if you love to play with lifted status, just use this Wolpofala, it is insanely good. The second mod your Crescent Wolpofala comes with is Crescent Devolution, which will turn your Crescent Wolpofala into a sentinel-like larva when it dies. The larva will last for 30 seconds, and after that, it will be revived as Wolpophyla. While your Crescent Wolpophyla is in the larva form, it will occasionally launch at the enemies and deal extremely small amounts of puncture damage, so yeah, it is not the best, but it, it is better than nothing. And now the third and the last Wolpophyla species, which is the Panzer Wolpophyla. The Panzer Wolpophyla comes with two mods, with the first one being Viral Quills. What this mod does is absolutely insane. Your Panzer Wolpophyla will be able to shoot quills every 4 seconds, which will deal some viral damage to the enemies and will also have a 40% chance to apply viral status effect on them. While you might think this is not that good, you're extremely wrong. The quills do have a chance to spawn a spore on the enemies, which will deal damage to the enemies over time and will also affect them with more viral status procs. This will make your life a lot easier since the enemies will be easier to kill, plus the damage will get sky high at some point. Just shoot the spores, you'll see the effects. It is, it is absolutely insane. The second mod your Panzer Wolpophyla comes with is Panzer Devolution. This mod will allow your Panzer Wolpophyla to turn into a larva-like sentinel that will occasionally shoot quills at the enemies dealing some viral damage and also affecting them with spores which can be shot and will multiply when you shoot them. It is insanely powerful. My favorite out of all three Wolpophalas is the Panzer Wolpophala because of the mods. I absolutely hate the Crescent Wolpophala because in my opinion the mods are the worst for it out of all three Wolpophala types. But yeah, there is one more mod we need to take a look at. You can get it from the sun for 10k in Trati standing and it is called Martyr Symbiosis, which you can put on your Wolpophilas. This mod makes the Wolpophila store health from the corpses that are up to 25 meters away from it. It will store 20 health per corpse and will stop when the amount of health stored is equal to 40% of your max health. So, if you have 1000 health, the Wolpophala would store up to 400 health. This is not the end of the effect of this mod. When you get under 10% health with your Warframe, your Wolpophala will sacrifice itself and will give you the 40% health it saved up. Yeah, this pretty much makes Wolpophala an infinite health generator because if you have the devolution mods you can respawn it and then get the health again, which is amazing. The only bad thing about this mod is that it will get your health up if you are under 10%, so that is not the best because you guys never get under 99%, you chads and chadets. That is pretty much it, but I really want to show you one more thing, the best thing I have ever seen to this point, and also the most useless one. There is an option to regress the genetic aging of your Wolpophila in the incubator. If you choose the option, your Wolpophila will be in small, then yeah, um, I will leave it at that. If you want to tame a predacite, you will need three things a weakened predacite, a mutagen and an antigen. You can find the predacites roaming around the Cambian Drift. These predacites will usually get into a fight with the local infested and when they get downed, they will get marked and you can pick them up. That is as easy as it gets. If you're having problems and cannot get the weakened predacite species that you want, my suggestion is to use the conservation trick with which you can find the scat on the ground, follow it to the main area, call the predacite and at last, trank it and put it to sleep. Then you just need to lure the infested close to it so they attack it and then pick it up. Easy peasy. The only thing you really need to watch out for is that you don't get too far away from the predacite when it's asleep, so it doesn't despawn. Vizier predacites are easy to get without any pheromone synthesizers, the items that increase the chance of rare animal types in conservation. Pharaoh and Mege types, however, do need the pheromone synthesizers. If you do use the pheromone synthesizer during Wom, you will find a Mege predacite, but if you use it during Fas, you will get the Pharaoh predacite. Yeah, just don't forget to track the animal and let it get downed by the infested. It will glow a bit so you know when to pick it up. When you have the weakened predacite variant you want, you need to bring it back to the necrolisk and to the sun. 
From him, you can get the two other ingredients you need. The first one is mutagen, which will make your predacite more resistant to specific status types. The second one is an antigen, which gives your predacite one polarity slot depending on the antigen type. You can see all the costs and effects of these items on the screen. It really depends on which ones you choose, but the rule of thumb is, the more expensive it is, the better it is. You need to buy the blueprints for these two ingredients, then craft them, and once again bring them back to the sun. When you are there, you need to choose the Predacite Revification option and choose the ingredients of your Predacite Revification process. The mutagen and the antigen change your Predacite's looks and stats, so be sure to look on the wiki if you cannot decide which to choose. When you are done, you can press Equip and then Build. Boom. You have a Predacite now, but this is not the final version of it. You first need to get it to rank 30 and then bring it back to Sun. You will be able to guild your Predacite there for 10 Sun tokens and 5000 in Trati standing, but you don't really need to do it if you don't want to. What the guilding will do is basically only allow you to get mastery rank points for the Predacites, that is it. But yeah, let's now go over every single kind of Predacite. As I said numerous times before, there are three kinds of Predacites and we will cover all three of them right now. They all come with one Penjaga mod polarity slot and also one polarity slot you choose with the antigen. We will look at the two mods every single Predacite subspecies comes with, so let us start with the first species of Predacite now, Vizier Predacite. The first mod he comes with is called Acidic Spittle, which will allow your Predacite to spit toxic shite on one enemy in a 30 meter radius every 5 seconds. The spit will blind the enemies it hits for 12 seconds, which means it will make them immobile. The spit will also do a low amount of damage that has the corrosive status effect, so it might remove some armor from the enemies as well for a while if the corrosive status applies. It is great to use against the Grenier. Iatric Mycelium is the other mod for your Wizir Predacite. It gives your Predacite the ability to summon a cloud of spores that will last 5 seconds. If you or your allies go through the trail of spores, you will gain 300 health over a span of 5 seconds, which is great if you are struggling with health. The spore ability can be recast every 8 seconds, but it will usually take more time since it takes some time to cast the ability itself. The second Predacite on the list is the Medjay Predacite. The first mod he comes with is Infectious Bite. It will unlock a finisher attack for your Medjay Predacite, which will deal 200% more damage than a normal attack. After the Predacite finishes with the finisher, the enemy will get covered in 4 volatile pustules, which will increase in size if you damage them. The pustules will blow up after 30 seconds and will deal all the damage, plus they may give the enemy a viral status proc, so it is quite good if you ask me. The second mod for the Medjay Predacite is called Paralytic Spores, which gives your Predacite the ability to charge at an enemy up to 30 meters away from it. When he collides with the enemy, he will spawn a cloud of spores in a 16 meter radius that will stun all the enemies in it. During the first 3 seconds, while the enemies are stunned, they will be open to finisher attacks, which is great to use with some of the arcanes or challenges in the game. And yeah, now let's go over the last Predacite we can get, the Pharaoh Predacite. The first mod he comes with is Endoparasitic Vector, which will allow your Pharaoh Predacite to spit a mass of tentacles to one enemy target in a 30 meter radius. The tentacle will slow down the enemy and will deal 20 viral damage per second every 5 seconds. Each time it deals damage, it also guarantees a viral proc, but sometimes you will even get a heat proc for some reason, I don't know why, but it does make this ability a lot better. After it is cast, the ability has an 11 second cooldown, which is not that long at all, it is actually quite common. And I also should talk about the parasite a bit more, it should be pulling enemies up to 5 meters away towards the host enemy, but sadly I could not show it because it might be bugged or something, I don't know. And the second mod for the Pharaoh Predacite? Anabolic Pollination, which is such a great mod to have. This mod allows your Predacite to spawn a trail of spores every 16 seconds, which will add up to 100% toxic damage to your attacks. The trail of spores lasts 6 seconds and if you go through it, you will get the effect of it for 5 seconds. It is great if you ask me. 
that is it about the mods you get from the Predacides, but there is one more mod you can get on all your Predacides. The mod is called Volatile Parasite and what it allows you to do is insanely freaking good if you want crowd control. You can get it from the Sun for 20k and Trati Standing, which is quite a lot, but it is worth it. Let's see the effects. Your Predacite will spit out a maggot every 15 seconds that will latch on the closest enemy. All other enemies in a 40 meter radius will then attack the enemy with the maggot. After some time, the maggot will explode and will proc viral status effects on all enemies within a 10 meter radius. This will also deal some damage, which is actually negligible, it's almost nothing, but the real thing is freaking viral status effects. Insanely powerful. That is it, before we go I really want you to see something else. You probably will never have to do this, but if you want to, you can regress genetic aging of your predacite. This will turn your predacite in one of the cutest pets I have ever seen in Warframe. Just look at him! He looks so freaking amazing! <laughs> There are altogether 4 models and you can build and modify them as you wish. Let's first look at how to get them. You can get all the part blueprints you need at Legs at Fortuna on Venus. He will sell the parts at different tiers of Solaris United so you might have to grind quite a bit if you want to get every single thing you want. You need to craft them and then bring them back to Legs and choose the Configure MOA Companion. There are four things every MOA needs. The model, the core, the gyro and the bracket. The model is the main part of your MOA which will determine its type. There are four models as I said in the beginning. Para, Lambeo, Oloro and Nykus. I hope I said that right. Every model comes with two distinct mods, all of which we will cover later. The core and the gyro parts are used to modify the base stats of your MOA, such as health, shields and armor, mainly they are for the Lux. And the last part of the MOA, the brackets, will add a mod polarity to the MOA's modding menu. Different brackets mean different mod polarities, which you can see in the game. So to build a MOA, you need to get all the parts you crafted and select build MOA. That is it, you have your MOA now. You may equip the MOAs with the weapons you would get on your Sentinels or you can buy 4 of these weapons at Legs at Tier 5 with Solaris United. If you do not have any of these Sentinel weapons on your MOA, they will simply do nothing, which is not that good. If you want mastery points for all the models of the MOA, you first need to rank them to level 30 and then you may bring them back to Legs and guild the MOA if you choose other services. You will need 5000 Solaris United Standing and 10 Training Bonds, which is not the worst but also not the best. And yeah, Gilding will only get you to level 0 again with the MOA and it will get you Master Rank Points. That's it. Let's now look at the models and what they do. Every MOA model comes with 2 mods and 4 Pinjaga Polarities plus the polarity of the brackets you get. I should point out that each model will come with two mods that could be put on other models as well. For example, I get two mods with the Para model, but I can put these two mods on the Lambeo model as well. The first model we will look at is the Para model. The Para model MOA comes with Whiplash Mine, which will allow it to deploy a mine that will pull the enemies in a 20 meter radius to the mine after a few seconds. This is quite a good crowd control mod and it is not that hard to use, just plop it down and it works. The second mod for the para model MOA is called Anti-Grav Grenade, which will give your MOA the ability to throw a grenade which will lift up all the enemies in a 3 meter radius. They will be dealt a trivial amount of damage and will float for 3 seconds, after that they will just get back down. The ability will then have a 20 second cooldown, which is not ideal since the duration of the mod only lasts 3 seconds, but yeah, it is what it is. The second MOA model is called Lambeo, which is the most gentleman-like. The first mod it comes with is called Stasis Field, which will allow it to create a, well, Stasis Field in which every ally will take 60% less damage and also the projectiles shot through it are slowed down by 90%. It lasts 30 seconds and then has to recharge for 20 seconds, so it is not the best mod ever, but it is one of the best mods for MOAs if you ask me. The second mod is called Shockwave, which we all hate when the enemies do it. 
What this mod allows your MOA to do is slam the ground and knock down all the enemies in a 12 meter radius. The Corpus built Shockwave MOAs to haunt us, so why not do the same thing to them? The third model of MOAs is called Oloro. The first mod it comes with is called Tractor Beam. This mod gives MOA the ability to apply a buff onto you. The buff lasts 20 seconds and it is quite fun. Your aim glide duration is increased by 100% and the gravity is decreased by 50%. That is it. Fly, fly, fly. Great on Wisp with her evasion passive. And the second mod for Oloro model is called Security Override, which is just... Wow. Your MOA will be able to hack everything with this ability with a hacking time of 2 seconds. When a console is hacked, it then has an added effect which is 30% chance to mind control all the robotic enemies for 14 seconds over a 30 meter radius. It is freaking powerful in Corpus missions and freaking amazing to use in spy missions. And now the last model, the Nykus model, which is very shielded. The first mod it comes with is called Blast Shield, which will turn your MOA into a melee crowd controller. It will give your MOA the ability to jump at an enemy, knocking down everyone in 5 meter radius. After that, it will reset its overshields, the capacity of which will be increased by 3000. So, if you have a Link Shields mod on Hildren, your MOA will not die at all. And the second mod your MOA comes with is called Hard Engage, which is absolutely insane. This mod will make your MOA a melee-only companion, even if it has a sentinel gun equipped. What this will do as well, it will buff its melee attacks with the mods from the sentinel gun it is equipped with. Try using her with the sweeper sentinel gun since it is absolutely insane and it is probably the best to use with this. Hounds are special companions you can get by defeating the Sisters of Parwas. There are three kinds in total, the Bahira, Dorma and Heck models, which all come with their unique weapons and mods. We'll take a look at every single one of them, but first, we need to take a look at the absolute basics. Each sister has a robotic hound that you will have to kill many, many times during your sister hunting missions. After you are at the end and you successfully kill or vanquish the Sister of Parwas that was assigned to you, you will get the blueprints for four parts for the Hound. Model, Core, Stabilizer and Bracket. If you craft these parts and bring them to Legs at Fortuna, you will now be able to customize your Hound. As I mentioned before, there are three models, but there are also three brackets, three stabilizers and three cores, which all bring you something different. The model of the Hound will get you one audit mod and a special weapon you can only put on your Hound. We will look at those at the end of the video. The core will only determine the stats of your Hound, the bracket will give you one denial mod and will also determine the stats of your Hound, and lastly the stabilizer will get you one prospectus mod for your Hound, and it will also determine the polarity of one of the hound's mod slots. When you have everything you need, bring it back to legs and craft your hound. We will go over every single mod you can get now. We will start with the model, then continue with the brackets, and then we will end with the mods you get with the stabilizers. So yeah, let's go. Kyra model comes with the null audit mod, which will give it the ability to strip 50% of the overguard of the Eximus enemy and will also mimic the effects of those enemies for 60 seconds. It is a very useful ability to have since it will help you a lot with crowd control. Dorma model comes with the Repo Audit mod which will allow it to disarm enemies in a 30 meter radius every 20 seconds. This is amazing if you love to play melee survival missions or any other endless missions. The enemies will flock to you so you can easily kill them and it is also quite good if you don't have a crowd controlling Warframe. Heck model comes with the Equilibrium Audit mod which will allow the Hound to use a Burst Shockwave attack that will throw enemies in a 15 meter radius on their asses. The ability to do shockwaves has a 30 second cooldown though, so yeah, it is not the best and in my opinion, it is the worst of all three audit mods you can get on your Hound. And that's it with the audit mods and the models of Hound. Now let's move to the brackets and the mods you get with them, the Denial mods. Cella brackets will get you the Reflex Denial mod, which will make your Hound generate a shield bubble every 10 seconds. 
the shield bubble will last 10 seconds and will absorb 90% of damage the hound would receive. The damage will accumulate and after some time, your hound will release a burst of energy that will deal the damage he received in a 12 meter radius with magnetic status effect. It is quite insane in some high level missions, but the damage is magnetic, so it is not that useful. Urga Brackets will get you the Diversified Denial mod which will allow your hound to split into 3 pieces, which will fight for 30 seconds and will deal 85% of the hound's collective damage. If all the specters die, the hound will not get down but will reappear with a 50% health, so it is not that bad if you want more targets on the battlefield. And now the last brackets, the Zoo Brackets, they will get you the Evasive Denial mod. This mod will allow your hound to teleport away from the enemies. After it teleports away, it will also gain a shield of some kind, which will have a 75% chance of no damage to the hound. This shield sadly lasts only 8 seconds though, so it is not the best. After the hound uses the ability, it also has a 15 second cooldown, which is not the best at all, so I suggest you choose one of the other two denial mods. And now the last trio of hound parts, the stabilizers, which will give you the prospectus mods. Frag stabilizer will get you the focused prospectus mod, which will allow your hound to shoot a focused beam of energy at your enemies. The beam will deal heat damage, which you can improve if you add more heat mods onto your hound. The beam will push the enemies back as well, which is very fun to watch, but yeah, since your hound will be stationary for quite some time, while using this ability, it will take a lot of damage, so it is not the best if you ask me. The Hinta Stabilizer will get you the Synergized Prospectus mod, which will allow your hound to fire out an electric spark that will deal electricity damage to the first enemy in a 30 meter radius it touches. The spark will then ricochet up to 7 times, so it will get 7 more enemies, or a few enemies more times. It is quite a nice stunning ability if you ask me, but it, I don't like it, I don't know. And now the last stabilizer mod, Vans Stabilizer and the Aerial Prospectus mod. The ability the Hound gets with this mod is so fun to watch, at least for me. The Hound will call down an airstrike every 15 seconds or so, which will deal a massive amount of damage to a group of enemies in a 7 meter radius. It is so satisfying to watch if you hit a group of enemies, but yeah, that is all about the Prospectus mods. Now let's go to the weapons you get with the Hound models. Now the thing is, the weapons are basically melee weapons, even though they look like they will shoot things at first glance. The only difference between the three weapons is the status type damage that they come with. The certain weapon comes with the Pahira model and deals slash and impact damage, great against shields and health. Batoten weapon comes with the Dorma model and it deals puncture and impact damage, perfect to use against armored robotic enemies. And lastly, the Ak-10 weapon comes with the Heck model. This weapon deals with puncture and slash damage, which is great against all Grenier enemies and also my favorite hound weapon of all of them, since I love to play against the Grenier. All the weapons you can get for your hounds have very low critical chance, but very high status chance and critical damage multiplier. So it really depends on how you want to play, but I recommend using hounds to apply status effects on the enemies. They are definitely not the best companions in the game, I would get that to Kavats or Vopavilas, but yeah, that is it. Thank you for watching, please let me know down in the comments below if you have any favorite hounds. For real now though, thank you for watching, please like, comment, share or maybe unsubscribe and also have a very nice day. Bye guys!